Welcome. May I have your attention, please? A belated welcome to the September 30th meeting of the Ape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. We apologize for the delay. Uh, the meeting was rescheduled from this Tuesday by the town to allow proper time for uh, posting of legal notice, and that's why it was rescheduled to today. We apologize for the late start on this. Uh, roll call, please, starting at my right. Uh, Jim Walsh. Len Galino. Jay Chatness. We do have a quorum of four members present, so we can proceed. First order of business is to review, approve the minutes of the August 24th meeting of the zoning board. I have a couple of comments. On page two, lines one and two, at the end of line one, starting with the word and, and have the, have the word current. Uh, front setback read 10 feet 8 inches. And then to continue that line, and her request is, please add the word is, for a variance for a proposed setback of 27 feet 6 inches from the front property line. Line 25, after the word ask, you will insert the word Mr. Smith. Line 29, at the end of the line, change the word could be to had been. Line 30, after the word road, add the three words in the past. Those are the only comments I have. Any other? <clears throat> May I have a motion to approve the August 23rd minute? So moved. Do I hear a second? All those in favor of those who were in attendance at that meeting? Minutes approved. Again, I'd like to uh, apologize for the rescheduling of the meeting by the town. Uh, thank you all for coming this evening. There is no old business to discuss. There's one item of new business to discuss. And that is to hear the request of Lisa Hansen of Nine Maiden Cove Lane tax map U5, lot 38, to enlarge an existing foundation and reconstruction of an existing dwelling within the shoreland zone of the town of Cape Elizabeth. If I may, I'd like to, for the benefit of the audience, both here and at home, give a, just a very brief overview of what is transpiring. I've been attempting to do this at past meetings, uh, and I hope that it will uh, uh, brief the audiences of, of what is coming for the evening. Um, this is an application C for the zoning board entitled Town of Cape Elizabeth Application for Reconstruction and or Enlargement of Foundation or Relocation, Reconstruction, Replacement of a Structure in a Shoreland Overlay District within 75 feet of the high water line. Uh, the main Department of Environmental Protection, otherwise known as the DEP, regulates the first 250 feet of all shoreline of the state of Maine. And they have certain guidelines for what can be done in that. And of that 250 feet, the first 75 feet falls under the, uh, a different guideline or a more restricted guideline. Uh, the town of Cape Elizabeth, the town councils over the years have taken the main DEP uh, and devised and updated their ordinances to uh, uh, support the main DEP. And in many cases, the town of Cape Elizabeth is, is a bit more restrictive 
uh, than the main DEP. This application coming before us this evening is not uh, for a variance uh, in the sense that its enlargement conforms to the space and bulk enlargement of dwellings within that 75-foot setback. But it is, it is more precisely described as review. Uh, the ordinance requires us that uh, any type of reconstruction of more than 50 percent of the value of a property within the 75 per, uh, foot setback of the high water line to be reviewed by the zoning board. So again, uh, I do want to make it uh, uh, point out the fact that what is before us this evening is not a variance. It is not an, uh, a request for invariance, but it's simply a review for reconstruction based on the extent of reconstruction of an existing dwelling that is currently grandfathered within a portion of or all of the dwelling within that 75-foot setback. With that overview, uh, I'd like to ask that the applicant or her representative please come forward, introduce yourself, please state your address, and present the application. My address? Your address, please. Sir. My name is Eric Peterson from Peterson Design Group. Uh, we're located in County Bunk, although I happen to live in Cape Elizabeth myself. My materials over here. Uh, helpful and, and uh, did a lot of my explaining for me. What, uh, what we're looking to do with the Hanson property is uh, some minor footprint uh, expansion that uh, meets the DEP standards as you stated and uh, uh, mostly uh, uh, some upward expansion. The uh, town zoning ordinance uh, allows for uh, some of the same expansion potential that the DEP uh, allows as well, which is a 30 percent, no more than a 30 percent expansion of uh, an existing dwelling within the shoreline zone. Um, what we are seeking uh, turns out to be a 27 percent expansion of living space and also falls within the 20 percent lot coverage as allowed by the town. Uh, currently, the uh, structures on the property cover 16 percent of the lot, and we are proposing an expansion that uh, bumps that up slightly to 18 and a half percent. As I said, the uh, the expansion of living area is uh, proposed to be 27 percent, and the expansion of living volume slightly higher at 28 and a half percent. Additionally, the uh, height as allowed on the property from the average original grade is 35 feet and the proposed structure will be uh, less than that. Um, we uh, have tried to uh, design a house that's in keeping with the, the architectural vernacular of, uh, of uh, Cape Elizabeth and uh, certainly uh, of houses that uh, have been built along the shore um, all up and down the coast of, of Cape. Um, we do want to just point out one um, minor alteration that we'd like to propose uh, as part of the site plan that we submitted to be included as uh, a modification for our uh, journey toward our final uh, approval from the ZBA. It's come to our then, attention. Uh, can you get it up so we can see it on the path of the it off? Would the board mind if I... Uh, can you, uh, you can clip it to the top of the, the board, part board okay. if, if you would. approach it coming down Maiden Cove Lane. Uh, there are two other houses adjacent to it, uh, 
um, the Bay Ross property here and the Wogan property here. Um, this is uh, Casino Beach down below uh, uh, a built up wall of some buttresses. The remaining uh, portion of the property is uh, bounded by the ocean and some, uh, some rocky areas. There is an area of uh, the property that is developed as lawn and uh, bounded by a stone wall. The uh, DEP mandates that no portion of uh, structure can be within 25 feet of that high water mark. And we've shown the 25 foot setback all the way around the property. Um, you can see that no portion of this uh, proposed structure comes within that 25 feet. The one small change that I mentioned that we would like to make uh, tonight, if we could, is that one corner of the existing building um, is a, what we've proposed is about two feet, just on one section of it is about two feet closer, it's come to our attention, than the existing corner of that building. So we'd like to propose a modification of this site plan that uh, would illustrate this, this one plane uh, on an angle being set back two feet so that it is truly no further, uh, no closer to the resource than the existing house. Other than that, the uh, expansions are all, um, as the Cape Elizabeth zoning ordinance uh, would allow us, uh, based on conversations with Bruce Smith, he's been very helpful in helping us navigate through the zoning ordinance. Uh, the, uh, the other three planes of the house are expanded uh, in a very small ways so that the uh, <coughs> Resultant is further is no closer to the resource than the existing closest plane of the house, if that makes sense. And again, like I said, I said before, the uh, the proposed lot coverage is uh, uh, slightly higher than is there now, but is well within the 20% allowed lot coverage within the shoreline zone. We've also got some exterior elevations of the house, if that's helpful to anyone to see those. This is a view of uh, the house. It should look familiar to those of, uh, of the uh, audience and the board that are familiar with this property as you approach. The garage is on a lower level than the house, and the garage actually will stay in the same location. Um, it becomes a little more usable so that two cars can fully get in and out of the garage. Uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's uh, hard to say that it's a new house or an old house. That's kind of uh, the idea that it looks like it fits in that location. Um, like I said, it does fall under the 35 foot height restriction. Uh, got some additional elevations. This is um, the side uh, facing the chip channel. You can see there are some elements of the design that are very reminiscent of other houses up and down the street, Birch Knolls and, and Cragmore, Delano Park, and other, other neighborhoods up and down Shore Road. This is the elevation that would face the beach. So as you're, as you're sitting on the beach, looking up toward the wall with the concrete buttresses, there's actually a large tree that would screen half of this, there's a tree, a, a large tree there now that's not going to be disturbed. This is the elevation that faces out uh, toward uh, Cushing's. That elevation currently has uh, a chimney on it and we're proposing to uh, have the chimney stay almost in the same location, it shifts just a bit. Just uh, as an aside, uh, just to, to sort of uh, close all, uh, all loops here, we uh, obtained a field determination report from Dawn Buecher at the main DEP office in Portland. She's the person that uh, would generate that kind of a report for Cape Elizabeth. And uh, she said that the uh, site plan as proposed meets their requirements uh, with the uh, addition of, a, of a, a PBR, a permit by rule. So we've applied for that PBR uh, Back on September 1st, it's a 14-day period. We did not hear any uh, negative feedback back from them, and uh, so therefore that PBR has been approved. So the, the permitting that's required at the at the state DEP level has been satisfied. Which type of permit is that? P a PBR. 
For wetlands? Perm permit by rule. Pardon me? For what? Permit by rule for wetlands? For activities within the shoreland zone adjacent to a resource. And it's my understanding that no response is an affirmative response? Correct. If there's any, yeah, that's right. And that's exactly how it unfolded. And do you have any written documentation regarding that correspondence? Actually, Bruce may have to receive something at the office. I haven't got any written. Uh, Don Buca called me today and, and said that uh, the permit by rule had been approved. Okay. Right. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? Could you point out the height of the roof ridge, uh, the highest point of the house? And <clears throat> the highest point and its elevation. Pardon me? And its elevation. Point out the highest point. You, you mentioned 35 feet. Would That's you? correct. This, this dashed line indicates the 35 foot height. And we've left six to nine inches of uh, extra space. Just And where is that 35 foot? D determined in the sense that there is a elevation grade change with it. Uh, apparently the, the easterly <coughs> two-thirds is at one elevation that steps down to the westerly one-third. Correct. The Hansons, uh, prior to engaging us to do any design work, had uh, actually they had to do that. Um, Owen Haskell, um, surveyors in, in uh, Portland, prepared a, a pretty complex calculation of the average original grade and that's what we've used to determine the, uh, the 35 the 35 foot height is taken from the average original grade the, the formula for which is uh, determined by the town and, and the uh, calculations that were done which we can supply a copy of to the town uh, were, were calculated using that formula but you're saying that the 30 the roof ridge is 35 feet based on the average elevation of the house. less than 35 feet yeah what yes less than 35 less than 35 feet. Feet. thank you in the uh, drawings uh, there are some places that uh, overhang the uh, they actually extend beyond the foundation there's a it seems like there's a, there's a lot of uh, bow windows or whatever that extend out for a foot or a foot and a half or two feet, whatever. Yeah, is that true? We that is true, and we've shown those on the site plan as the as the extreme effect of uh, what we're proposing. And that is reflected on this first. Yes, the first. Of, this one right here. Yep. Okay. yep. You'll see mostly uh, in the in the corner facing. Uh, it's towards the ship channel, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, slot of land here that's called Bob's Hole. Uh, this, that bay, I think, maybe what you're referring to. That's in the uh, in the sunroom. Okay. That's a cantilever. So that's not the cement or the foundation. That's actually the overhang. Correct. Okay. So what we've right. shown here is the extreme extreme effect of what we're proposing. Oh, okay. Could you describe how you determine the the existing volume? And, it, and uh, I assume you started with square footage of the house. And was that, uh, well, the percent of the lot increased is what I'm talking about at this point uh, of impervious ground cover. The increase, will you describe how you determined the square footage of the house and the total square footage of the impervious ground cover, please? Yes, the, uh, the square footage of the house was calculated using the um, The allowances that are uh, stated in the ZBA application. I think it's on the. You're talking about footprint, Jay? Or? Well, the, right. I, I want both, actually. Uh, I'd like for him to discuss both. The, the first figure is your uh, impervious ground cover, which you state goes from current of 16% to proposed 18.5%. And then the, the very next is the square footage of the structure within the 75 feet. I'd like you to describe both of those. Sure. The, uh, the percentage of lot coverage by impervious surfaces, um, we had some information from a survey that was provided to us uh, of, of what was there. So it was very easy to calculate that 16% of the lot was currently developed. And we simply took the additional square footage that we're proposing as expansions of footprint and those numbers, which we can certainly supply to either Bruce or the board um, as a follow-up, um, brought that number up to 18.5%. So your increase of 2.5% of impervious ground cover, that includes not only foundation, but walk area, drive area. 
actually the drive for the most part the driveway and the walkways will will remain as they are okay um, it's the, the the slight increase in uh, lot coverage really is the is the small areas of expansion the little pockets that you can see we've shown on the on the plan uh, to answer your second question, the uh, existing floor area, it's, it's, it's really nice that the town actually right on the application gives the formula for calculating uh, floor area. Um, and we've, we've uh, done that uh, using, the, uh, using that formula. Uh, I've broken it down, um, including uh, there are there are some one, two, three, four different categories, I guess of square footage. The garage is one uh, portion of the square footage that's counted toward uh, expansion. And this may help explain, I know that some, uh, some folks that uh, have called into the town or emailed in have had some concern about some discrepancies in their understanding of the size of this house and, and our uh, assertion that it's a different size to start with. Um, the difference may be that uh, any information they may have seen on the house would, would describe uh, what's considered to be sort of living space. Um, just on the upper two floors. And the town, uh, when uh, calculating uh, the expansion potential, um, includes everything uh, like garage and um, spaces at the, at the, what would be the basement level that aren't basement spaces that are expressed above grade. Uh, for instance, this house has um, a family room and a bathroom and a laundry room and a mud room. All those things are um, spaces that uh, someone who has not been in that house or doesn't really know about the house wouldn't know were necessarily there. So. I can see that to some people, the number of 5,302 <coughs> square feet, you might look at that house and not think that it would have 5,302 square feet. Uh, in actuality, it's a pretty thick house to start with. It's pretty square. Um, and uh, it does have that lower level space. And that includes the garage as well. So there is a, another uh, almost 800 square feet of basement space that was not counted toward that 30% uh, expansion because it is truly basement space, which is excluded from the town. Uh, so you did not count basement area that's correct okay as the as the okay. town uh, guideline stipulates when you walk in the front door you're on the first floor you counted that area and the second floor well uh, and I the garage and garage and and space that is at the grade level but uh, but is finished space if i if you can imagine that <coughs> if you come to the front door of the house you've already climbed up a flight of stairs from the from the grade level the garage is at grade level and there's space adjacent to the garage uh, that you can get to from an exterior door that you walk right in at grade level. That's and you're counting that as gross living space? Correct. And gross living and, area. Uh, and uh, yes, and, and, and have done so based on conversations with Bruce too that uh, you can ask him about. Well then what are you excluding as basement then? There's a portion of the house that's truly just basement space that okay. was not counted toward that. That's unfinished basement. Okay. Uh, as well as I might add, um, the town would actually allow us to include um, porches and decks and stairs and things like that as square footage uh, for expansion, which we, we happen not to include, 219 square feet. Could have taken advantage of, but did not. So you did not include decks and porches? Correct. In your 5302? That's correct. Original. Mm -hmm. okay. I answered your questions? Yes. And in your proposed square footage, I can assume that you are what you are counting as basement then in the current, you're still counting as basement. Correct. Proposed, or is any of that converting to really the that that grade level is unchanged. Okay. The only thing is the, a, a small expansion of the garage to allow it to be truly usable as a two-car garage. I have a question for you. Can, yes. can a similar house be built on the existing foundation? Say that again, please. Can, can a, this house that's been designed this be built on, on the existing foundation? Well, we're actually leaving the existing foundation and and adding to it so this house will not be lifted basement cleaned away and put back down like does happen in some cases the basement's actually the, i mean the foundation is actually pretty serviceable so the idea is to leave the foundation as is and add to it in little bits and pieces here and there it's sort of a we're uh 
The re reconstruction doesn't include taking the house down. It, no, no, not at all. The house is going to stay. It's going to. Okay. I mean, this, kind this of house has some, uh, has some issues right now. It's, it's got uh, stucco, old stucco that is uh, failing in many places, and a tile roof that the Hansons have tried very hard to try to find someone to come in and do tiling, mm -hmm. and that's, uh, that's it's very exotic. They've, uh, they've not had good luck finding someone that can come in and do maintenance work on the tile, and they have leaking issues, and that's kind of what triggered this, the thought of renovating this. Is they couldn't find people t to do the work that they needed to do on the finishes that are there. What percentage of the existing structure did you find within the 75 foot? The whole thing is within the 75. That's, it crosses that. It crosses it from two directions. That's what I determined also. So you, you. And, in reality, counted the entire structure is within the setback. It certainly is, yes. How did you determine the high water line? That was off a survey that was provided to us. So Owen Haskell? Um, you know, I can't recall who did that survey. Royal River? Who? Royal, Royal River surveys. We can provide a copy of that survey if it's uh, the, the, all the plans that we received were uh, from your office. Correct. We used that survey as a basis to develop that site plan. So the, the hatched line on, on your site plan is based on the survey determination that, of the high water line? That's correct. In any instance, did you use top of bank? Top of, we used... Um, top of bank? No, we used the high water mark. Just a question for you. You started off by indicating that you were amending the application um, to deal with a, one corner that um, expanded towards the water body. Can you point that out to me on the uh, chart? Sure. There? And what I'd like to do is perhaps the, the board can, can uh, give us a suggestion how to modify a plan and have it be the plan of record for acceptance tonight if, if, that's, uh, if that's feasible so that we can avoid having to go to another meeting just for that one thing. Um, can I bring it up to you or what's the, <laughs> what's the easiest way? Um, that's, uh, that's fine. Maybe you could just give a description first of, for the audience. Sure. It's, uh, I guess that would be on the uh, east face um, adjacent to the Bay Ross property, there's a 36-foot setback line to a diagonal corner yep. um, next to that old pool location. Mm -hmm. um, that that <coughs> would need to be 38 feet. We need to we need to make the dimension from the high water mark to that angled wall 38 feet rather than 36. Because currently it's 38. Correct. And what what about on the flip side? Um, on the upper right hand corner of the building. That's the uh, 36 foot? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, a deck, right? That is. A that's, porch. A, that's a small deck there. And that's a case where um, that corner, if you measure, the, that corner of the house does not come any closer to the resource than, uh, than any dimension uh, portion of, the, of that, any of those corners along there. Just point of clarification that because it's three-sided, we take each side as, as an individual so that you look at that side over there, the closest existing is 32, so nothing on that side can be closer than 32, and then the other side is a 38. So we have three different dimensions around it. Rather than, rather than if it was only 20 on one side and 40 on the other side, and let them take just the 20 and and, and do a whole 20 feet on the other side. That, that's, that, I don't think that's the intent of the ordinance. That's why we had to they segment it into three different sections. So it, and how do you calculate the 32? The 32 goes from the average of the wall? or That's the closest point of the wall. Closest point. When I did walk the property, I, a couple of years ago, I, when you first were interested in buying, I think I met with the surveyor out there. That's something I forgot to mention to you, Jay, when you asked if I'd been out there. Um, I walked the property with 
with a surveyor uh, so we could so they could develop this plan because uh, that's something I was I didn't I couldn't remember that I'd done that but I looked in the records and and uh, found that I had been out there so there is validity to where the uh, the uh, Omaha water line is and Bruce you agree that with the modification they're proposing it doesn't go more towards the water I believe this is accurate before I issue a permit I I'm going to double check I'd like to double check to make sure that everything's right but yes the corner in that, that you, excuse me Jay in that survey that he refers to as the basis for this is that going to be submitted correct we can submit that if, if, it, if you like to verify okay The, the corner that you addressed regarding modification, you said you were going to pull that back from the proposed 36 feet as we to 38. Where did you determine that 38 foot line? Uh, based on that, the closest point of the existing structure, if you would be, let's say, swing that 36 foot dimension uh, counterclockwise, it, say it's at uh, 130 right now, go back up to uh, 1 o'clock. Uh, there's a corner, the existing dotted corner of the structure that's there uh, is about 38 feet. So that's the corner that, if you draw that arc, the closest point from any portion of the structure at that corner to the closest point of the high water mark is 38 feet. And that's what we're proposing is that that, then therefore that corner would not be any closer than 38 feet. From your described line of 36 feet, you're, you're looking at the point to the left of that counterclockwise of that? Yes. And that's existing? The uh, dotted portion is existing. The dotted portion? Yes. Okay. So no, por no portion of that, that, the corners of that structure will be any closer than 38 feet, the existing dimension. This issue here. Yeah. But what's the story on the other corner? Can you? Can you explain that to us? I mean, that if the dotted line is the existing property, uh, how does that how does that square off in there? You've got 36 feet. Right. The, well, when we uh, sat down and talked with Bruce about it, he's he. And I'm glad you're here because you can uh, uh, validate this interpretation. That his interpretation was that each side be treated separately, that each, each side, of, each plane side of the building mm -hmm. be treated as, a, as that, as a plane. And then the closest dimension of any portion of the high watermark to that plane would be, the, would be the shortest dimension, and that no portion of that plane would come any closer than that, than that dimension, which is what we've met. That actually makes it more restrictive than using the shortest non-conforming point around, because otherwise you could pull the whole building closer to whatever the other side was, and I don't think that's the intent of the ordinance to allow that. So that's why I segmented into three different sections, um, because I don't believe the intent would be to, to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. And the deck, as it's calculated in this, how's that? How's that work? I mean, it's it's going to have sauna tubes or some kind of a, a structure to hold it up. I mean, but, that... but it's still further away than the the closest point to the existing structure. Isn't that isn't on that plane? Isn't that corner necessarily? It's it's actually closer to where the dining room bay is, where the 25 foot and the 75 foot setback take off from that point. That would be the shortest dimension. Okay. At the, at the corner of that little inlet. Right. Uh, just a point of clarification from Mr. Smith. The, the setbacks that we are, the guidelines specify that the setbacks are the exterior surface of the wall. Is this correct? This is the, the final exterior surface of the wall is what uh, for setbacks for, for, for high water, it's, it's, the, it's the drip edge. It's the drip. So it would be the, including the overhang. So including the overhang? Did you take that calculation? Yes. Okay. Which can be substantially different from the foundation, is that? It, at this scale, actually, <laughs> not really. I mean, this is 1 in 20 scale. 
the thickness of my walls there is a, a foot. So we we have accounted for the overhang and the drip line in the on the whole structure. And we can, when we submit our uh, drawings to Bruce, we can give him something maybe at a bigger scale or something that shows that. But yes. So you look at a different interpretation within the, the overlay, Shoreland Overlay District, is that correct? Well, DEP has a DEP more restrictive that. A, a definition. So our definition to setbacks for anything else is to the to the wall. To the exterior. Um, but that extra step has to be taken when it's shoreland um, setback from the high water. And in, in all instances, Am I correct in saying that the town ordinance is, is as restrictive as the main DEP, if not more so? Is that correct? By law, it has to be. It has to be as, at least as, as restrictive. So our ordinance is at least as, as restrictive? Yes. Could you, one of the points that we're looking at, uh, Mr. Peterson, is uh, the condition of the foundation. Would you please? the existing foundation, a portion of which will be used. Um, and to further that point, how much of the existing structure are you going to reuse? <coughs> Describe the foundation and its, its current condition and how much of that you're going to be using. Actually, the, the majority <coughs> of the foundation, I don't have a percentage for you, but an overwhelming majority of that foundation will, will stay. And the new foundation pieces that are created will be made to match aesthetically the existing foundation. Um, it's, a, it's a stone veneered foundation, uh, concrete with stone veneer. And uh, I would anticipate that the Hansons would probably want to match that so that the uh, overall finished product uh, blends new and old uh, aesthetically so that you're looking at stone veneer. So would you say the existing foundation <coughs> as it is, is usable completely, oh, yeah. or none of the existing will be replaced, it'll be added to primarily? For the most part. I'm not saying exclusively, but in general, it is all usable. Correct. Okay. And Correct. you will add to that? Correct. And uh, to go along with that, uh, the part, of, like the garage, for instance, the two walls of the, the, the two outside full height walls of the garage are moving out a couple feet. Um, but that's not a, an area of foundation, actually. That's a framed wall that goes all the way to the ground. So in instances like that, it's, it's framing rather than, than a foundation that's being changed. But yes, the, uh, the overwhelming majority of foundation will be uh, retained. And the second part of my question, the, uh, the, the amount of teardown versus reuse of the structure. That's why we're here, because, <laughs> because the... Uh, the uh, amount of uh, work that they would like to do to this house does trigger the 50% of uh, value. Uh, clearly, the, the value in that particular property is not necessarily the dwelling. In monetary terms, it's the land. So uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of renovation work to trigger a 50% cutoff with, uh, with that structure. Um, certainly, the second floor will be, will be most heavily modified. I mean, the roof line does change. The roof profiles change. Um, and the second floor will be basically redone uh, in, in its entirety. Um, the first floor, um, some portions of that do stay. The, uh, what is uh, proposed to be the dining room is now a bedroom. Um, the uh, kitchen is, is in a similar location. It's a new layout, uh, but the, uh, the living room is the same location. It's a side-to-side it's a -side living room. The sunroom is in the same location. So <coughs> honestly, I think it... Uh, I'd be lying if I told you that I knew exactly how much was coming down because we need to see what it looks like. I know that they've found areas of rot uh, based on the old stucco that's been removed. So, so, I mean, I'm renovating a house myself, and with an old house, I know that you, it's never exactly what you anticipated, and uh, we really will only know what the wall condition is like once we start taking some finishes off. Uh, Jay, a question for Bruce. The drip edge that you talk about, if you look at these drawings, the, the bottom, you know, sort of skirt, if you will, around this house sticks out further than the drip edge on the roof line. How, how are we determining drip edge? What, what it's the closest point. Closest point.
Would you please describe the location of the current septic system and what your intent is regarding that? Sure. The, uh, the, the benefit of all of us. That's, a, that's very good news for uh, the town and for DEC. The current septic system is on the, I guess it's the westerly, the southwesterly side adjacent to If, if you'll turn that so the audience sure. can also see, please. Where these three concrete buttresses are, the land that's held up by them is the current septic system. And the, uh, Eric can speak to this if he, want, if he wants to. I've, I've only heard about it anecdotally, but uh, the Hansons have uh, approached two adjacent neighbors, uh, all of whom have uh, septic systems now. The rest, of, the rest of the neighborhood is on sewer, uh, to the best of my knowledge. And the Hansons want to uh, get together with the other two abutters and uh, connect to the, to the uh, town sewer. So that's actually in the works. I believe they've, they've got uh, an engineering firm applying for the proper permitting to do that right now. So the septic system will be uh, abandoned uh, at this point. It'll be abandoned. Once, once the sewer connection is made. Mm -hmm. Where's the closest tie-in point? I, uh, maybe Ant Eric Hansen should speak to that. I, I, I don't know. Sure. It, it, I think that would be of interest to, to people, as, okay. if, if you don't mind describing yeah, your intent. Not at all. We hired BH2M out of Gorham, Maine. It, I'm sorry, would you introduce yourself? Sure, to Eric Hansen, um, not officially a homeowner, uh, but I do reside there. But um, we, what we've done is gotten together with our two neighbors. We're the only three houses that I know of not on public sewer we would like to be. and. So we've hired BH2M out of Gorham to work with Bob Malley at Public Works who, uh, to, and Portland Water actually to get the maps together and design a, um, a, the best way to approach uh, a hookup. It, it, it's unclear right now because they don't have the final information in. Um, there's, a, there's a hookup down on sort of where, where Garden Circle meets Surf Road um, but that may, that's closer, but it may not be the best hookup for the town. There's one down, further down Cottage Lane, and that would be further, but more likely probably that we would hook up. And that's what I have for information at this time. So what they're, what they're doing right now is getting all their maps together to make sure they know what, what lies under the ground in both those routes. And, and to talk to Portland Water about their opinion on the condition of those sewers. Is that? So you you feel like you have tentative approval from the relevant bodies to? We, to, we yeah. the Bob Malley would like to see us hook up to it, um, and the, 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 the uh, pardon me. You say he would. He would like to. Um, the DEP is ecstatic about it. Um, they're very interested in that. And what we would be what we would be required to do. Um, again, this comes from the professional engineer that we're working with would be to remove our septic systems. Um, we have the choice of removing the septic tanks, or you, I guess you can fill them with sand, apparently. And um, the leaching systems would have to come out. So that's pretty much it. Uh, a question that I have that is probably has no bearing on this evening, but it's a question that is of interest to me and maybe other people is why I'm asking this. Uh, is that tie-in off your property at your expense or town expense? Uh, definitely at our expense. Okay, it's completely at your expense. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. In, in fact, relative. I'm sure there'll be some major improvements to the sewer connection area at our expense when so we do So the full extent of the tie-in is at your expense? 100% including the hookup fees, I think, are $3,300 per home. That's but but you said that you're cooperating with your butt or the butting. They're all. Are you sharing in it together? We we are, which makes it sort of economically feasible for us to do it. If if one says no, you're still going forward. Most likely. Thank you, and I hope you understood why I asked that question because it Sorry. is a relevant question, I believe, to me anyway. <laughs>
Uh, before you sit down, if you, if I may question you further, the, the points that we're obligated to review, and I know you're aware of these, I'd like you to discuss the, the relevant ones, uh, the size and shape of the lot. Uh, we've discussed that in that it appears that 100 percent of the lot is within the 75-foot setback zone. Uh, would you discuss any potential for soil erosion you see with, based on the new enlargements? Mm -hmm. I sure can. Um, actually, this is a really good candidate for uh, no soil erosion uh, due to the fact that the lot is bounded on three sides by a retaining wall. It's, it's just perfect for that. There are two openings in the wall where stairs uh, go down, and those will be uh, treated with a standard siltation and stake, siltation fence and a staked hay bale uh, set up as recommended by the DEP. Um, the uh, the uh, remaining portion of the site, like I said, uh, is, uh, is bounded by that stone wall, so it's sort of a, a contained area. So uh, <coughs> soil erosion uh, will, will, will not be an issue. And I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you reiterated that the, the entire structure is within the 75 feet, which uh, you can see makes it really impossible to consider expanding in any other area. There just is nowhere else to go there, which is why it's really such a modest footprint expansion, because it really, it's little bits and pieces that we were able to get um, for expansion. There's really no wholesale expansion in any direction. There is a, a detached building structure on the lot. What is the intent with that? That makes it sound much nicer than it is. It's a vinyl sided shed. <laughs> and the intent? Um, maybe to put cedar shingle siding on it. <laughs> That's about it. To, yeah. to keep it. Yeah, maybe so that the uh, vinyl siding could uh, match the house. It's yellow. I have no further questions at this time. Uh, Chairman, uh, to, the, to the degree you can answer the question, you know, one of the other issues is the impact on views of other people in the area. What, do you have any position or a statement to make about that? Well, the fact that it, uh, it does not go any higher than the height restriction would allow, I think actually the Hansons have done some, a little bit of research on, on uh, what kind of impact it may have. Um, do you, and you have more information on that than I do, so I'll let you speak. I can't see it from my house, though. It, it, the house is sort of placed fairly uniquely, I think. There's a ch huge tree that hides the house until the leaves fall uh, most of the time. The, the, the way Eric's designed it, what we were trying to do is, even though the roof would go up, I think, four feet, it's basically it's in the same section it is today. Um, because we're not moving the foundation of the house, we're just changing the structure a little bit. Um, and so what we were trying to do is to make sure nobody had a view loss because we've got some neighbors that are fairly close. Um, we've shown the design to the Bay Rosses um, and to the owners of Eight Maiden Cove, um, Matt Wogan and Leo Blair, and to the Burks, all the Maiden Cove um, folks have seen it and, and like what we've done. So can't we can't figure out if anybody would have any view loss. I, I, it, it, I can't imagine based on what we did, and that's why we did what we did. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. We'll now open the floor for public discussion. The order that we will uh, take comments for those supportive comments first. If anyone is would like to 
Come to the podium, please. Any supportive comment? Hearing none, uh, comments in opposition. Oh, sorry. Was that too quick? Are you supportive? Yes. You please introduce yourself and state your address, please, sir. <coughs> yes, I'm Bob Bayross. I live next door to the Hansons at 5 Maiden Cove Lane. We've been very concerned about this project and have been watching it very closely. We've met uh, with Bruce to go over some of the details this last week. We've also, I've been very familiar with some of the regulations that we have with the DEP and the Shoreland because we've had some conversations and some problems with them in the past. Uh, as far as I can tell, as far as I know, there is no conflict with the rules and regulations of the town as for this expansion. There are, <coughs> My wife has written a letter, which I believe Bruce has, that says that we have no objection to the instruction. And you're a direct to butter, sir? Yes. When you approach the property, are you, you're on the right-hand side? Yes, sir. The closest we have, we property? share the same drive, the same drive uh, parking areas. And we are probably the closest to butter. Now, my comments are strictly regarding the proposal and the, the construction. In your, uh, you've had discussions about the septic system and the potential of tying in. Yes, we have. Uh, we have some preliminary ballpark figures on it, which are shocking, but uh, we all feel that would be a good thing to do long term. Actually, historically, the town turned down building the sewer down there at the time we put the sewers in the town because they didn't want to put a pumping station down in the middle of that turnaround. Now the technology lets us put a, I forgot the right term for it, but uh, each house will have its own little force pump that will push the sewage back up to the main line. So each homeowner is then responsible for their own maintenance of that, that pump. Okay. Any further questions? Anything else? Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Any other comments in support of the applicant? Hearing none, any comments in opposition, please? Mr. Chairman and other members, I uh, appreciate an opportunity to speak in opposition to this application. Uh, I want to compliment all of you. Could yeah, you my name is Joe, name Joe Calise. Sorry? It's Joseph Calise, C A L I S E. And I live at 15 <coughs> Surf Road with my wife Judith. 15 Surf? 15, which is in the uh, neighborhood, uh, not adjacent or immediately uh, uh, a neighbor of the Hansons. Um, I, I guess my comments are, are as follows. It seems to me that the Hansons are asking the town to make an exception or a variance or to permit them to do something that a clear reading of the ordinance would not permit them to do. Um, they live in a, a wonderful home that's quite large that they bought a short while ago and they knew what they were buying when they bought it. It has a two-car garage, it is a beautiful home, and uh, it will serve them well as it stands. And I want the board to have a sense that the community expects the board to uphold the ordinance to the extent that it's been carefully considered by the town and it's designed to protect the town and that when you grant variances or exceptions or conditional uses, that it's incumbent on the applicant to say in a very strong way, this is the only way that I can use this property. And I think we've already established that the existing property is a substantially non-conforming property. It's well within the 75 feet of the shore of, of the high water mark. 
And the lot itself, on some sides, does not extend to the high water mark, which is an important uh, distinction to draw. When you look at, at the ship channel, and you look at the, at the plot plan, it doesn't extend to the, to the actual high water mark, which is somewhat customary in southern Maine. So I think that's important. And I also want to mention to you that uh, although this doesn't apply exactly, I think it is germane. In the actual ordinance on page 40, when we talk about reconstruction and replacement of dwellings, and this is in the shoreland area, there is a provision that says essentially, if your home is destroyed by fire or lightning or some act of God, even though it's in the sensitive shoreland area, you may rebuild it. Because essentially, this happened to you. You didn't ask for it to happen. But it also goes on to say this, and this is in a case where somebody has no choice. In no case shall a structure be reconstructed or replaced so as to increase its nonconformity. <coughs> And that's why I object to what's happening or what's being asked for today. Because we have a non-conforming use. We have a beautiful home. We have a home that is an icon in the area. And it can be used the way it is. I have no objection to improving it as it is in its current configuration on its current uh, foundation. But I think, as the ordinance states, anytime you make something larger, you impact visual uh, sight lines. This is a, uh, a neighborhood where all of the owners of property in this neighborhood, by deed, have shared interests in the property lines and the ability to pass and repass over these lines and to go to these beaches that are in this neighborhood. And it isn't the immediate abutter that gets impacted by a bigger home in a prominent location. It's everybody that lives in this neighborhood. And so I hope you will consider those comments. Thank you. Any other comments? My name is Mike Marino. I live at Fort Bush Knowles. Uh, uh, this uh, handsome home is basically part of our, our, our view, our view line, uh, which we have uh, enjoyed now for many, many years. Uh, I'd just like to speak to the nature of the, of the community that we live in. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a historic cottage neighborhood. By and large, most of the homes in the area are 2,000 square feet to about 4,000 square feet. <coughs> Uh, the Hanson home, just by being uh, in sight, just by the nature of where it is, it's, it's out sitting out there on the peninsula. It's, uh, it's very visible. It's a very important piece of uh, property. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's in, uh, I think as Joe Cleese says, it's very important for, for, uh, for, 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 for everybody. And I think that, that uh, if it doesn't fit into the rest of the, the community, as far as the scale and the bulk, uh, then it's, it's really, it's, uh, it, it hurts everybody in, in the neighborhood. And it's not just the views. It's just not the views of being able to look out to the ocean. It's, again, it's how it fits into our community. I think a, a good point that Joe, Joe makes, and I think that you, you guys uh, certainly have to look at, is uh, if it is a non-conforming property, which as I understand that it is, I think that the crux of most zoning uh, laws, and I think to include Cape Elizabeth, is that you can't make a property more non-conforming. Thank you. Other comments? My name is Elizabeth Wanahan. I grew up uh, as a kid looking over at the Gibbons' house. I played many 
many hours in that house. It's a beautiful, your address, beautiful please? house. Excuse me? Your address, please. My address, I, my, I live at um, 4C Star Lane, which is over off of Old Ocean House Road. <clears throat> my father lives at 40. Four what? 4C Star Lane. Thank you. <clears throat> and my father currently owns his home at 40 Surf Road, which I visit very often still. And I have a, a community feeling for this particular house. It's a beautiful house. It's a large house. It's an adequate house. And it is a very picturesque house. It's something that we all love to look at. And we have been looking at it for a long time. I think both Mr. Marino and Joe have really hit it on the head. It's already non-conforming, already. Any increase any of any size is going to make it more so. And also, there is an importance of community and respecting and keeping things uh, of a historical nature in that area. That's the Cape Cottage area. It's very historical down there. And to keep in the nature of the size and uh, look of the homes is very important. I, I also just question um, the survey itself. I think whereas the survey wasn't presented here, uh, today to establish the high water mark, I don't think a decision really can be made unless that is part of the exhibits, personally. I also uh, question the increase in value, whereas you can't um, increase or uh, change a home more than 50% of its value. And I think the interpretation of those ordinances is the structure itself. And I, I question how much is this uh, project going to cost? How much is the value of the house as it exists today? And do those jive? I don't, I don't think that that's been addressed. Thank you very much. I strongly oppose this. Further comments? Mark McIntyre of property at uh, Birch Knowles, three Birch Knowles. And I guess I really don't have any comments so much as question because I, I received a notification of this hearing and I'm here. But I don't understand the purpose of my being notified. I mean, is what they're proposing within the laws that they exist? You say that there is no variance being asked here, is that correct? There's, that's correct. What is the point of the input? The ordinance requires that if a structure is rebuilt exceeding 50% of the value of that structure, that it come before the Zoning Board of Appeal for review. So whether or not I like the appearance of what's proposed. Sorry? Whether I like the appearance or, or the change it makes in the character of the neighborhood is, is not germane. Would that be correct to say? Uh, comments are certainly important. And uh -huh. if, if there are some points that are determined that do not conform to the ordinance, then, then those will certainly be taken into account. See, I, I have they to review. honestly admit to you that, that I came because of a fence that exists on the property that has offended me and prevented my grandchildren from walking on rocks that I enjoyed as a child myself. So I came thinking, if there is a way to oppose this, then I will, but apparently there isn't. So I have nothing to say. Well. The, the ordinance states as such that we're required to have a re review. Uh, it, it doesn't address the specific that you just But mentioned. there is no variance being asked here or any There's hardship no being proposed no. or anything. No. But there are eight points that we need to look at mm -hmm. and to see if the, the setback uh, that the, the enlargement meets the setback to the greatest possible extent right. as stated by the ordinance. So it's just a matter of rulers and applying the rules. Is that correct? It's a review, yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments? Uh, 
dear. I feel like I probably shouldn't be here either because all these, um, these were all sent out. Excuse me, my name is Patricia Franson. I, um, my father owns 40 Surf Road. I'm a potential inheritance of that house. Oh, go ahead, please. Um, 40 Surf Road, all right? We grew up there. Again, that's my sister, that's my you father. <laughs> okay. Could you say the address again? I'm sorry. 40 Surf Road. Cape Surf, thank you. All right. So I'm not going to really make light of this, but I was hoping I could come here and ask the really simple question is, what can I possibly do to make this not go through, you know? And uh, it doesn't appear we really can do anything. So I'm sort of like with Mr. McAdair saying, you know, these were sent out. I guess it's just an official thing. They're going to tear down, and I'm sorry, they're going to tear down. There's no way they're going to preserve that stucco. I don't know what they're going to do with that beautiful roof. But, you know, to say that they're just going to add on and fix up is, I, I don't see how they can do it. All right? We have this house is 5,300 square feet. Again, I think that's perfectly sizable for a family of four to live in, but that's not the way it goes in Cape Elizabeth these days. People come in and they really have to live big. But anyways, uh, so when you add on 28%, that makes it up to, I think it was like 6735, something like that. That's an increase of 1600 square feet. If you're not gonna change the size of the house, all right, you say you're going a foot out here and a foot out here, where is the 1600 square feet? Is it my understanding it's just gonna go up? So we're gonna have this massive house so that when we sail our boats by, we don't see this beautiful stucco house we've seen all our lives, you know, just modest and just say, oh my Lord, you know, we're gonna see a large house, right? Wouldn't that, is that correct? You know, it's going up, it's going up 30. It's, you how, saw tall the, the, how, how tall is the peak now? You saw the elevation profiles. As, yeah, but, um, as but the peak now, the house only goes like this, correct? Right now there's only one peak, correct? And that's 34 feet, right? Is that right? And it's going to go up to, you're adding four feet. Is that correct? It's only going to go up four feet. Four feet by what? Four feet by 800 feet or four feet by, you know, I mean, to say it's a modest, it's a modest uh, renovation. It's, it, it can't be. 1,600 square foot modern renovation is really quite large. Right now, the house only goes like this, correct, right? It, they, have, they have two sides of the roof, right? So now it's going to be. It's a different roof profile because it's there now. That's great. Well, anyway, I, I, I strongly oppose it. I think the house is absolutely beautiful, with, you know, the way it is. Obviously, it's the way of the world now. And people are coming in left and right in Maine and saying, not good enough. Got to flatten this historic house. Got to make it the way I want it. And, you know, it is the, it is the way of the world. But I really needed to make this, 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 uh, this point because I think it's very, very sad and unfortunate that people cannot appreciate a house that was built in 1930 where hundreds and hundreds of people, the Queen Mary, all those people, they all see it, all those, sh those ships see it, and, they, and I'm sure when they go by the shipping lanes, they, that is a house that they don't miss. And I just think it's unfortunate. I wish I had spoken to the Gibbonses before they sold it and said, why didn't you put a historical thing in this house that they, you know, so no one can ever take it away. But, you know, so. I'm, I'm very sorry, you know, obviously, uh, probably nothing we can do, but at least maybe you have this on tape or something. Thank you. Thank you. Comments? Please. Hi, uh, my name is Maya Cohen, 21 Surf Road. I'm part of the Cape Cottage neighborhood. Although, as Joe Clee stated, we don't um, immediately abut the Hansons. I would like to state that I do oppose their um, renovation project for all the reasons that Mr. Cleese mentioned, that Patty Franson has mentioned. We have only been in the neighborhood for six years, but that house is a very, it's a beautiful house. Every old house has got its issues, um, and I understand that and certainly appreciate it. We live in the old Benoit house, and we certainly have our fair share of issues and problems as well. 
Um, if you want to talk about nostalgia and probably unofficial navigation, that house, a lot of mariners who unofficially use that house for navigation. Call that, you know, you know, it's not official, official, but a lot of people look to that house. You know, when you know that you see the yellow house on the point, you know how far out you should be or how far in you should be. And that's really quite important, I think. But I think that um, the, the one question that I do have that I don't, I don't feel was adequately addressed is how much of the house are we going to preserve? Is it going to be any of it? I mean, how much of the house are we going to be able to reuse? Um, and the reference to that the living room will be, certain rooms will be in the same location. Well, that sounds to me, and perhaps I'm interpreting it incorrectly, as that they're pretty much going to gut the house. And I've been told since we've lived there that that house is a treasured house, and it seems to be a shame that there can't be another way to do this. Thank you very much. Ma'am, could I just ask you, is there a particular provision in the zoning ordinance that you feel that this violates? Yes, the they do. Okay, I feel that just it, tell us what that is. I, I agree with Mr. Kalis that it should not be, a, be additionally non-conforming. And, and what they're doing. And how is this additionally non-conforming? By increasing the square footage, be bumping out here, bumping out there. The, um, the ordinance does, just for the record, does allow, as I understand, Mr. Smith, you correct me if I'm wrong, 19.4.4 B1A basically allows a renovation of a structure uh, so long as the expansion in floor area or volume will not increase by more than 30 percent. I understand that. Okay. So, and as I understand the presentation here today, it does not increase by more than 30 percent. That is true. Okay. However, this may not matter to the board. But as living in the community, it matters to me that although change is inevitable, um, dramatic change to this building seems unnec unnecessary from a living standpoint. That's my opinion. But I can certainly oppose the project, though. From a what standpoint? I'm sorry? Your last statement. You said from what standpoint? I said, I, I mean, I'm certainly, I can certainly oppose the project, and in, in my opinion, it is certainly my opinion, but the house is very large. So expanding it seems, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. But as everyone has stated here, that I happen to agree with. Okay. Thank you. Please. I would like to, uh, I've already identified myself, is that sufficient for the clerk? I'd like to address the question of, of the authority for you to go forward because there, the ordinance is a tough thing to work with. I was actually vice chairman of this body more than 15 years ago and I know I never felt like I understood all of the uh, nuances of the document and uh, I think that there's a lot of vagary in, in the cited reference. Uh, and if I may, it states after January 1, 1989, any portion of a structure that doesn't meet required setbacks, et cetera, can be expanded by no more than 30%. That particular provision came out of changes to the Shoreland Zoning Act that applied statewide. And it was a statement that had to be in nearly every zoning ordinance. Uh, it was a clamping down by the state of the uh, amount of expansion that could, be, could occur in these, in these sensitive areas. And although I know the ordinance is what we have to deal with, I would submit that that particular statement, of and by itself, should, should, should be paragraph A. I don't think it has a lot to do with the rest of the paragraph. And if you read it further, 
It says, construction or enlargement of a foundation beneath an existing structure, which means the house as it is, shall not be considered an expansion of the structure, provided that the structure and new foundation meet setback requirements to the greatest practical extent as determined by the zoning board, which is what is being called upon here to allow this existing structure to be expanded. And, I, and then it goes on to talk about how modifications to the foundation can be made to bring the foundation out to the, to the uh, perimeter of the existing structure, and that won't count against the 30%. And it also talks about how you can raise the foundation three feet, and that won't be considered part of the 30%. But what we're talking about is what we can do to the existing structure. And this is essentially a reconstruction of a building. And as I said earlier, the only place the ordinance deals with reconstruction is when somebody has the misfortune to experience a fire or some other tragedy that destroys the building. And when that occurs, it says you can rebuild it because you've been harmed without any uh, without any action on your part, and you can only rebuild it within the non-conforming footprint. And it says you can't make it any bigger. That's when somebody has, it, well, this is it, not a voluntary act. So all, I would just submit, and I know we can't resolve this right now, but I would submit that I would not rely strictly and, and, and forcefully on this. I think that you have to go back to your responsibilities as a zoning board of appeals, which is essentially to uphold the zoning ordinance and to put the burden of proof on the applicant when they want to vary from it and to look for strong reasons for a variance from it. And what, I'm using variance in a generic sense, not in the, in the literal sense of the ordinance. So I think it's been said over and over again, this is a very substantial dwelling, and I don't want to take up a lot of your time. We all maybe want to go and look at the remainder of the debate that's going on. But uh, it, it shouldn't be the board defending itself for not granting it. It should be a substantial reason for granting it. And that's how I'll leave it. And thank you very much. Thank you. Comments? Again, my name is Liz Monahan, and I think the reconstruction is a key part in this. This home right here, the style of this home, is not a Spanish style house as, it's, as the house stands today. That house is a Spanish design house. This is a reconstruction of that house because now this becomes more of a New England style house. New England style or cottage style or something along those lines. You'd have a better idea of how to describe it, but that's a reconstruction. And, and, and so I agree that in interpreting these zoning ordinances to refer to what, what do we do with the reconstruction? You're saying that the style is becoming New England style? Is that what you're in? How are you describing the new style? Sorry, I lost you. My, my, my point is that when, when we rebuild a house, whether it be 30% or not, you're in, in size, you're re reconstructing a size of a house by 30%. You, that house would have to be completely torn apart to be able to transform from a Spanish style house into this style house. So maybe, there, maybe the intention is that it's going to be a square footage increase in size, but it really is a change 
in the community, in the type of house that it is, and I, I just I think that it it brings it into what um, Joe was Joe was saying is that the reconstructing it, and if the reconstruction is the key word here, then that property that is non-conforming already by increasing size in square footage on the on the footprint and also the drips of, of the overhang of the roofs is it doesn't it's making it more non-conforming miss monahan just a question for you the duty of the board is to basically implement and apply the zoning ordinance and that's for obvious reasons, just so that we don't sit up here and totally utilize our sub own subjective view of what's appropriate or not appropriate and leave everybody at our total whim. We have an ordinance that, which sort of limits our authority to do anything. And our job is to apply the zoning ordinance. I, what I hear you saying is that you feel that the change in character and design is such that you don't like it. You would rather see it stay Spanish and similar to what it is now and you don't want to see a change. But our duty is to apply the ordinance. Is there a provision of the ordinance which you believe precludes the change in style? It's really not about the change in style. I think it's also your duty as a zoning board member is to listen to the <clears throat> people who are affected in the neighborhood by it and, and to support the community and the feeling of the community. Because your job is really to uphold the community that surrounds this particular piece of property too. A absolutely, but the body of law that does that is the ordinance. And we are bound by the ordinance to apply the ordinance. This embodies what the community has decided is important to it as enacted by the, the uh, legislative body of this town. And so this is what we go by. So if you have a provision in the code that you f feel that this violates, we're happy to listen to that. And we're also happy to listen to everybody's comments because this is a public, public forum and you're entitled to make your comments. But in order to be helpful to us in making our deliberations, it's helpful if you can pinpoint provisions of the ordinance that you feel that this does not, that this well, does I, not. I think it was on page 40 that I'm just going to, I'll, I'll finish with on page 40 uh, where Joe read the sentence about the property. If it is conforming, our job is to make sure that that non-conforming unit does not become any more. And my opinion is that we are creating, or this proposal is creating a more non-conforming property. Thank you. Other comments? <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Lucinda Yates, and I live at 11 Birch Knolls. I live directly across the call from Eric and Lisa, and I look at their house every day. Well, actually, I look at their big tree, which I thoroughly enjoy. Uh, the only thing I'd like to say um, in this matter is that if indeed the provision is as I think Mr. Cleese has stated, that the requirements are that you look at a more non-conforming structure, which I'm le being led to believe at this point may be happening. If that's exactly what the code or the enforcement code says, I do believe it would be your job to enforce that. I don't have anything to say about what it's going to look like or anything like that. It's not my business. People have their rights to their own property and to do what they want with it. But I would be... Um, Grateful to you if you would enforce the code as you see it written. And if it's not conforming by what that says, I think you need to do it. One point I just ask you, and what I'd like to point out to you, is the applicant has indicated that this building layout is not, does not make it more non-conforming. It does increase the size, but it doesn't make it more non-conforming. There's a distinction between those two. And I haven't seen anyone yet present any evidence or make any argument to convince me that there is, that this is more non-conforming. I can't do that for you either. I'm just saying that if the law reads that way, I think it needs to be followed. 
I, I, can, I can comment on case law. There's, there is case law out there that, that this particular point has, has uh, been taken to court on several different occasions, and, and uh, the, the courts have ruled that the nonconformance comes into play when an applicant wants to pull closer to the ocean or closer to the water body. Uh, case law has shown that as long as the nonconformance is increased to the water body, that that was the intent of this section. Mm -hmm. And there's no further nonconformance in relation to the shoreland zone for this particular session. So and your calculations are that we're not going more towards the ocean by this design? That's correct. Uh, this however, design is, a, is modified by their change tonight. This is not, this is not the first time that this argument has is, is, uh, been posed. Um, However, one, we, one do thing need, we, we do need that survey, that information, to determine whether that high watermark is, in fact, the correct calculation. Is that true? I believe what's been submitted is, 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 is accurate enough to, for the board to take determination. But if you but, choose to get that, that's fine. Let me comment on that. My observation, and I asked this question early on regarding uh, standard boundary survey and how the high water line was determined. Uh, it is my understanding from the plans that were submitted that 100% of that lot is within 75 feet mm -hmm. of the high water. It's a unique situation because it's bounded by water on three sides. 100% uh, of the lot is within the 75 feet. 100% of the house, obviously, is within 75 uh, feet. Therefore, the actual location of the high water line is not critical. I would have early on if this had have been uh, part of the property outside. Uh, and I'm, I'm justifying uh, your point. I think it's a very good point. Uh, but since they do have a standard boundary survey and they are going to present it, mm -hmm. it's my feeling that it is completely irrelevant mm -hmm. because of the fact that 100 percent of the property is within that 75 if you look at each, each of the three sites. So therefore, we're not concerned with absolute location of the high water line. We're concerned of the relative chain mm -hmm. or the uh, encroachment, increased encroachment to the high water line. And that's very easily determined by the existing footprint of the building. If, if the, the way the ordinance reads, the way the main DEP reads, is that to the closest high water line, you cannot increase the nonconformity. In other words, if your closest point is 36 feet, you cannot build closer than 36 feet, period. And because all of the property, I'm not so concerned with where the location is, I'm concerned that they do not go closer mm -hmm. than any point on that side of the house closer to the water. Mm -hmm. Your point is very well taken, and I think that would have been a, a main trigger point if it had been in question. Yeah. And in any event, I assume, Mr. Peterson, you've just uh, <clears throat> grafted onto your plan accurately what the survey is that you started from. Correct. You're a certified licensed architect? Any other comment? Yes. Please. <clears throat> Well, I, I would like to address this issue of nonconformance. The, the existing footprint is in nonconformity. Right. This is an overlay district. So this property has to meet the overlay requirements of the shoreland zoning, and it also has to meet the residency requirements for setbacks. Has anybody determined uh, whether it meets the existing requirements in the RC zone for setbacks on the other parts of the property? Is it conforming to the IC zone? It's 20 foot setbacks. All right. And, and the new footprint would keep them within the 20 foot setback? Keep them outside of the 20 foot setback. Okay, right. outside the, so that on the other sides, they are in conformity. Yes, sir. So the only non-conformance issue is the shoreland zoning requirement for the 75 feet. That's correct. If, if they were encroaching right. upon that setback, then, then they would indeed the re requirement for variance, trigger the requirement for variance. Right. And the 75 foot setback from the point of view of shoreland zoning is from the high water mark. And even though the lot line 
the property that's owned doesn't extend to the high water mark, we still use that 75 foot measurement. Because along the channel, the property has a lot line that is not high water. That's, I mentioned that earlier. So I, I'm, I don't know how you measure that, but I just point that out because normally you would measure lot, lot setbacks to the lot line. And I believe the lot line and the high water mark are two different animals in this case. Just wanted to add that. Mr. Smith, how's that normally determined? Well, would it, would, <coughs> it, would, it would, Trump would be the, the one that's, that, that makes it more restrictive. Correct. In this particular case, it's, it's the, uh, it's the water, high water setback, not the setbacks to property lines. Both come into play, but one, one or the other determines. I would like to make a comment on the, on the uh, if, a, if a place is destroyed or damaged by 50 percent, the, the, board, the applicant still ends, before, uh, ends up before this board uh, to see if it can meet the setback to the greatest practical sense. So they don't, they don't get a free ride. They don't, uh, what? They don't get a free ride because it, it's burned down. Um, and that's why, even though the audience doesn't say somebody that self destructs even maybe should be here. Well, because of that, that I, I, I take that hard line and say that they need to go still increased to this board. Uh, that was one of the points I'd like you, since you mentioned that, to comment on that. Uh, one of the points that a member of the audience made was that this was a, a self-designed reconstruction, not, a, not due to some disaster. Right. Could you comment on that? Please? Well, and, and that point is a question whether that's even included as something for review. Our ordinance is a little dated in that the DEP has recognized that, that that was the intent of the audience was to also include properties that people want to self-destruct themselves. And they have changed the language and added, um, if a non-conforming structure is damaged or destroyed and, lose, and or loses more than 50% of its value, that's to cover people who decide to, that's my interpretation through talking to Dan Pritchard from DEP, that, that, that that also includes somebody that wants to do renovations over 50% of the value, which means that the intent of the audience was to include all parties, not to penalize the person who had the fire and allow the person who wants to self-destruct to have free reign, but to include them all in the same, same review by this board. And oftentimes the board has in the past required, if there's a possibility, to make that less non-conforming. And that's the, intent of, that's the intent of this section, is to, to try to pull it away from the resource to protect the resource. Any other comments, please? I'd like to go over some of the points that were mentioned for discussion. And, and I'm going to uh, keep the floor open for discussion, for any comments. I, I did not interrupt. We did not interrupt each commenting person. Uh, because I think it was beneficial to hear all the comments. So I'd like to, uh, if there are any comments, uh, please, please give those comments, uh, as long as they're not repeats of what's already been said. Uh, I discussed the issue of the high water line, um, and, and so that the change is a relative change. Uh, Mr. Smith discussed the self-designed rebuild or the reconstruction. Uh, the, again, I, the, it's my observation that uh, since this is bounded by water on three sides, that we're looking at it as three waterfront. Uh, and we specifically preclude an individual from building closer to the water. Uh, and with the exception of the southeast corner of the property, uh, that has been, from the plans that were presented to us, that has been, been met according to the ordinance. Uh, the, the value of the property was mentioned as a point. Uh, I'm not sure of the relevance of, of, of that. I think that it's... Uh, proper with anyone who purchases a property in town that they can deal with and, and improve, choose to improve that property 
uh, to what extent they want or need to. I, I, the ordinance does not address that. It's not my opinion. The ordinance simply does not address that. Uh, there, this next comment was going to be addressed to the gentleman, the three birch no. Uh, I appreciate your comments that you made. Uh, there's, a, there's an old saying that don't shoot the messenger uh, with us being the messenger. I think you shot us. Really? <laughs> well, you, you, I, I, I'd say this completely in, in, in humor. Uh, we are simply interpreting the ordinance. Uh, we don't make the ordinance. Oh, that's what I said. The, the, we, the, the uh, town council, many town councils and many review, and I made that statement completely in jest. Uh, well, I don't feel shot either. But uh, I, I, I think the messenger. I guess I was just I questioning the messenger the need was a, for a, a need bit shot. Uh, mm -hmm. But we we are simply to review, and the 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 reason for that is that is if there is an alternative to rebuilding on the existing foundation, then we want to try to find that alternative. The ordinance says that. If it's reconstructed more than 50%, then we are required to review that. Whether there's an alternative or not, we're required to review that, and that's the way the ordinance go. Uh, the ordinance also says, in support of the DEP, that uh, someone can rebuild up to 30%. It doesn't even require this meeting. If they, if, uh, uh, what does require this is the percent of rebuild, which is in excess of 50% of the value of the property. That's the reason we're having this, not the, not the extent. Okay, but I guess I'm asking what is the purpose of the meeting then, other than if there is a rebuild that exceeds 50%, I just there is a meeting it. that's required, but is there anything that, that has to be determined or decided? Is there a judgment to be made? But we're listening to all, all, all the comments. And if we find that there are any comments that are valid in interpretation of the ordinance, well, we certainly want to support your comments. We're, we're searching to find the valid comments. And that's, that's our intent. It's, a, it's a, a fair review. I appreciate the opportunity to have to give a comment. Well, we appreciate all the comments. Uh, we have to interpret the ordinance. Uh, it, 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 we, we listen to the comments, and we have to apply the comments to the ordinance. And if there's something that can be changed within our boundaries, then we certainly give it a, a strong consideration. I mean, that's, that's our purpose. Thank you. And when I said that about you, it was totally in jest. I, I thought, I wanted to respond to your comments, and I appreciate it. Yeah, if I could just follow, follow up on that comment. The, the, this public forum is helpful to us, and the review process is set up because it is a compli complicated calculation, especially with a house like this where you have water on three sides. Bruce does the best job he can. He's human. He can make mistakes. Any of us can make mistakes. And the public forum is allowed to give people the opportunity to review the plans and, and analyze the ordinance and see if the applicant is missing something somewhere along the line. And oftentimes, there is something that can be modified to make it come in compliance with the ordinance. But the real job for all of us is to analyze the ordinance and figure out whether or not the application meets the requirements of the ordinance. Uh, there were comments about the, the style and, and beauty of the existing house. and, and uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, everybody has their own opinion. The ordinance does not specify or define that as for us to, to comment on, uh, uh, to respond to. Uh, again, that's a function of the ordinance, and the ordinance is a function of the town council. Uh, uh, if changes need to be made in the ordinance, then, then the town council is the avenue. We do not have the ability to change the interpretation of the ordinance. Uh, Any other comments? Can I say one more thing? Please. Okay. If it hasn't already been said before. Well, it has historical value, maybe. <laughs> um, again, um, just a real quick comment, all right? Um, 
I know you guys have all the details and everything that you, you're going in. Is there anything in your ordinance that has anything to do with historical value? I mean, that's just, it's just, it's just a up, up, you know, building goes up, building goes down, whatever, you know? Is there anything? This issue is that, is that anything that they would ever, is that anything that, is they that just not detailed enough? It's just too, it's just too um, they had individual? A, they had an historical section in the ordinance that they removed a couple of years ago. Oh, they did have, a, they did no, remove no it from the ordinance, a yeah. historical section that they removed from the ordinance. Why? You'll have to ask the, the uh, citizens of the town. It was their choice. Oh, okay. Well, I'd just like to make one comment. Um, I think that everybody in Portland who grew up in Portland, when we ripped down Union Station, we've never, we've never forgotten that. We now have a strip mall, okay? And um, they may rip down this house. I don't, they're not going to rebuild it. They're ripping it down, all right? So I would just like to just close by we never, we, actually, we, we haven't forgiven ourselves for Union Station, um, and I think the one up in Bangor and several other places. So, so I just like to um, just make that comment that, you know, down the road, you know, maybe when that ordinance comes back in, like it should, we live in a historical neighborhood, Cape Cottage, let me see now. My father's house was built in 1925. It was the first one down there. As a matter of fact, this house was the care, no, this house was the undertaker's house, okay, in the neighborhood, the undertaker's house, all right? You had, you had the Cape Casino up there. There used to be a beautiful, like, you know, public dock that went down. And I, I just think it's, you know, we should think about this. Because when, once you take a structure like this down, it doesn't come back. All right, and I know it's, it's not, again, it's not fair to do this to you. I just, I just would like to make that comment. You know, you have your ordinances or whatever to do. I think it's a crime. They took that, that, um, that historical section out, and that's probably down the road. Maybe we'll learn from this, and maybe we should put that back in. Well, thank you. Know? you. Thank you. And again, I'd, I'd say this. Not as an excuse, but the ordinance does, simply does not address that. And I, I, I either I'm, I'm glad it doesn't or I'm sorry it doesn't. And I don't know but what to say to you. There was a historical ordinance in there. And you know what? I guess maybe it needs to go back in. Well, you know, this issue was addressed several years ago where there was an inventory of the historic houses made. And, and, and uh, uh, encourage you to know. talk to the town council. It's the place to go. I will take it. Yes. To the board, our charge this evening was to determine whether the building enlargement and reconstruction will meet the setback to the great, greatest practical extent due to the following eight conditions, eight points. The size of lot and the shape, and we've determined that uh, the entire lot is, is as it is. There, there are no alternatives that would uh, to, to keep them from rebuilding in the current location. The slope of the land is basically flat. Uh, there's some of these points that are not re relevant. The potential for soil erosion. Uh, 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 in, in any issue like this, if, if they were to change the position, position or location of the house, there could be increased potential for soil erosion. We don't know that. The, uh, uh, I would assume that they will be closely watched for uh, uh, soil erosion prevention, and as as is all shoreland and wetland encroaching property. Uh, location of other structures uh, on the property or adjacent properties, uh, it's not a relevant issue. The septic system, they have stated, and uh, I think it's probably a, a benefit to the, the whole area, is at not this house, but any house, if uh, in a tight neighborhood, if the septic system is removed. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. So I'd, uh, if they're tying into city sewer, it sounds like they have the blessing of the, uh, the town relevant utilities and maintenance department. Uh, impact on views. Uh, impact on views, they are fully conforming of the height restriction. Uh, uh, Cape Elizabeth, for better or for worse, does not have a view easement, does not have any view requirement. This is one of the few, if only, point in the ordinance where views is even mentioned in our town ordinance. 
I think you need to look at that zone because on the on the on Casino Beach, they would be impacting people's view. All those all those houses that are lower would certainly be um, impacted by by that the size of that structure. Well, I think that really needs to be looked at. My understanding. Thanks, that's a good point. But my understanding is that a reconstruction in existing location versus relocation on the lot, uh, what may improve a view for one person could, by relocating the house. Five houses right now that be okay. What, by relocating the house, which cannot be done in this property because of the no, I'm small. Just, I'm adding the roof line. No, but I, what I, my point is that by relocating the the house it could be a positive to somebody else's view and a negative to somebody so you, you move the house well it's going to open up your view but it's going to restrict their view so i think that's that's the intent of that statement is not to place a view restriction or view easement on the property because cape elizabeth unlike falmouth does not address view easement so uh, but what would be beneficial for one could be a, very easily be a negative for another and uh, another uh, property. The type and amount of vegetation to re be removed to accomplish the enlargement or reconstruction. Uh, that question wasn't asked, but uh, or I'll ask it now, are any trees going to be removed? Is any significant? What's There's the one large tree. Yes. No, that, that large tree. The, There's one large tree in the front and And the, the last item for review is the physical condition and type of foundation present. And you stated that the existing foundation was in good quality and you intend to fully reuse that and add to that. Uh, again, I'll point out that this, this, this is a review, an opportunity for us. If we can make a change, the town wants us to review and relocate the property if we can beneficially. Uh, we've addressed all the points. And there are very little, if any, alternatives. Please. Uh, there was one point, though, that you made that you really didn't have an answer for, and it was on the value of the, and, and maybe I'm not interpreting the uh, ordinances correctly, but the value of the property was it established, and is, are the improvements going to exceed 50% of the current? If if they don't exceed fifty percent, then they're not not even here. So I'm not I'm not sure what you'd accomplish by they wouldn't even there wouldn't be any review if it was less than fifty percent. What is your question? If if they were let, let me restate what Mr. Smith just said. If, if if they had an assessed value of the house and they were making modifications, reconstructions, or improvement at 49% of the value of the house, this, this, we would not be required to be here tonight, period, as long as they have met the, the Shoreland Performance Overlay District enlargement of 30%. If they're less than 30%, which they are, at, as is the proposed, we would not be having a meeting. They are more than 50%. It's not our determination whether it's 75%, or 600 percent. It's not relevant to us. Uh, just another question that hasn't been 100 percent. If it's not clear in my mind, is that for the septic system itself, have they actually done formal approval from the town? To that it's actually an, it's actually a non-issue because they're going from five to four bedrooms or four to three bedrooms. They're going to less bedrooms, so they could feasibly stay on the septic system they got. They're only doing that because they feel that's in the best interest of, of not only themselves but the town. So that, that's not a requirement. Um, if they were increasing the number of bedrooms, in, so we'd have to tie it to either a new sewer, a sewer hookup, or a new septic system, but they're decreasing. Just lastly, um, if, if, they're not, if they're increasing the size of the foundation, is that they're, uh, as long as they're not would, uh, I'm sorry. Would you please come to the podium for further questions? I just thought it was just clarification. I really, I was just questioning. Thank you. If, if you said that they, uh, as long as they don't go any closer or increase any, any bit of the foundation closer to the um, shoreline. That's correct. If, if the closest point to a shoreline is 36 feet, they can't go to 35 feet. 
They can go 236 because they're not in, they can't go a foot closer. They can't go an inch closer to the property, to the shoreline, wherever that high water line is. And, and that's, that's in, in, in their drawings, you've, you've seen the drawings the, clearer than we have. Our purpose is not to review the drawings, but the drawings will be in any uh, high visibility case like this, the, the drawings will be closely observed. And you don't and, feel and that that's not our obligation to do that. And Bruce, do you feel that, that have you reviewed the survey that was done for the whole setback well, see, and all? I think you have to, I, I don't know if this is, is that relevant right now. If somebody's determined the high water line based on an NGVD, a given elevation, then, then that, however that travels, is going to travel whether it's, whether I determine it's 10 feet up from there or 10 feet back. If, mm -hmm. if there's a known NGVD, a given ERP or reference point to go by, that's only going to change relative to the same, same mm -hmm. shoreline up or back. So, I only, so I, it's, it's either 36 or 38 or 40, mm -hmm. but, but you know the point, they, the point they, of process would be, would be no different. Right. I just say, I think this, just having that survey as part of your exhibits, it would... It's not an exact piece. science, but, yeah. but we do pay attention, or I do pay attention to the site plan to make sure that, that things like that do not become more known. And I hope you understand. That's what it's all about. I mean, we have to protect the resource. Right. And I don't think the applicant has any objection to submitting the survey to Mr. Smith for, for confirmation, right? Okay. Thank you. Any comments? Are we closed for deliberation? Uh, for board discussion now is what I'm asking. So we're done with the public comment? It, uh, apparently. Well, I have a question, Bruce. Um, it has to go back to, the, I think, take a little exception, I think, to your comment on the, on the public sewer, and I think it's a a trivial one, but I think if that project falls through, I still think, even though they're going to less bathrooms, I think the uh, ordinance does require that the present subsurface disposal system meet the, the requirements. So wouldn't that have, wouldn't they have to have a certification of the field being intact? And, you know. No, only time, the only time that you have to look at a septic system is if you, if you're uh, adding bedrooms. They're taking away bedrooms and this is still the existing house, the existing dwelling, the existing use, then you can't require them to, to upgrade something that's, that's, unless it's malfunctioning. But you don't have to prove that the system is, what the system was malfunctioning? Not in this state. In Massachusetts you do, but not in this state. Thank you. That's probably coming to that, but. Discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, one of, one of the, the issues that, that comes through in this last woman's point is that if you look at this plan and you look at the, the original drawing and you see the dotted lines and you see what's been added, I think that's where the confusion is coming with people thinking that this thing is going to be increased in size and it's going to get closer to the mean high water mark. I think the, the, the intellectual side of that is what is concerning to the public. No, 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 I did, I'm, 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 you know, I'm asking your question in a different fashion, but that's where the, that's where I think the, 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 the confusion exists. Um, with, with all of the right calculations and setbacks and all, everything that's on here, you know, it fits with what is correct. But the point is, you look at it and it's a larger building on this existing plot plan. That's, I mean, that's... Well, but I, I do require proper documentation. Yep. Um, that it doesn't, it won't meet, it won't go closer to any one of the three sides. Yep. And, that, and that's all that, 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 that we need to establish. We need to establish right. that. But it does right. fill in some of the irregularities sure. in this foundation, sure. which is what I think some people are hung up on. And unfortunately, it is what it is. But based on the rules that we're applying to this, it's correct. But it does add more to the, to the, to the volume, I guess, or to the to the, the lines that we see drawn on this particular plat. Uh, again, I assume your standard boundary survey shows the precise location of the dwelling on, on the lay of the land, 
and and that is certainly we would like that submitted and to the code enforcement officer and then that will not be an issue and as I understand the application that we're considering tonight is to be modified to make sure that we're not going closer to the ocean than any of the high water marks correct we're also going to be submitting the survey to mr. Smith to confirm the accuracy of the calculations that we've already gotten in this plan and third mr. Smith is still going to be confirming that in fact we're not encroaching closer to the high water mark on any of these three sides I would so move the application for approval well based on those three modifications unless I'm sorry there may be more comments but when we're done with comments I would so move any other comment and I'd like to just underscore that the chairman has and has on more than one occasion in board meetings that I've attended to welcome comment and look for solutions or look for alternatives so I think it's very important we live in this community as well I brought four kids up on that beach I've looked at that Spanish style home many a day and had a distant view of it from my house on Wood Road oddly enough in the middle of winter so all the aesthetic values aside you know I think that we are members of this community as well and we want the right thing but we do have a body of law that we have to follow and I think it's just important people understand all of that as we go forward with our decision and I echo those comments too I hope nobody takes my comments as being trying to quash the commentary it's just I would encourage people for future reference to recognize the body of law that we have to apply and try to pay particular focus on that because it will help deliberations and help us in making modifications to applications as they're put before us may I make a motion sure any other comments before I make a motion to approve the application of Lisa Hanson nine Maiden Cove Lane for the building enlargement and reconstruction of a structure and its foundation in a shoreland overlay district within 75 feet of the high water line all those in favor four in favor zero opposed who's the second second may I have a second are there no communications the next meeting is October the 26th any other comments I have just an announcement there will be a workshop prior to that meeting at 6 o'clock we'll supply some meats pizzas and chips and stuff and the town attorney here and he'll give us an overview and you'll have a chance to ask questions and get caught up with any changes at 6 o'clock on October 26th right now prior to send notice out to that effect man October 26th I have a motion to unless is unless is unless there's no cases if there is then no cases that will work sharp will go to the next meeting I'll make a motion that we adjourn this meeting here second all those in favor thank you thank you